Good morning, 8-3. Uh, Mr. Brown here again. Um, as you know, today, Monday the 27th, uh, we have an assignment based on the poem, The Backyard Then, which I've given you in PDF form, and I've given you a Google Doc uh, to answer the multiple choice and, and, um, and discussion questions. Uh, I'm now, uh, in this video, in the common lit section of it, though, because I'm going to go over it with you for a little bit. But So you might want to take uh, the time now to pause the video and open up your Backyard Then PDF and maybe even your, your uh, questions and as we just go over the poem. Okay, so you might want to take the time now to get that poem. Okay, we are doing the poem, The Backyard Then. Okay, we're going to do a little analysis on this poem. This is written by Emma Bartley, an American poet. Uh, it says here that she often focuses on childhood mem uh, memories, um, something she's doing in this one. Um, in this particular poem, a speaker recalls memories of their backyard. That's it. Uh, they are just uh, writing about their feelings about a particular memory of the backyard. Okay, so it sounds simple, but of course, when we read poems, we know that there's a lot more information. There's a lot more dynamics going on. There's a lot more human emotion going on, and we really have to unpack it. So we're going to go over this pretty carefully. The first thing I'm going to do is to just read it all the way through, and then we will uh, we will start to um, analyze it a little more closely for meaning and theme, etc. Okay. The backyard then. It used to feel too big, and mostly abandoned. Leftover land between neighboring cul-de-sacs and the elementary school. Still, I would visit its few humble stations, the cracked stump by the fence always crawling with ants, the narrow space behind the garage lined with unused slate, just standing there waiting for my parents' hands. Then there was the shady dirt under the old maple tree where I read, cradled or sinking between dying tentacle roots. Was there ever any glory there? I can remember a few hum humid evenings through the cracks of the door. Twilight hanging like a velvet curtain, the thinning pine trees at least only in silhouettes. My parents would be at the top of the empty hill sitting at the rusty wrought iron table in an orb of orange candlelight. I knew they were eating artichoke with hot butter, scraping off the meat of the leaves with their teeth and just casting the rest away. Okay, we've got a lot going on here. Again, this is just a memory of a backyard. Um, it sounds like a childhood memory, and we can see um, what she's trying to convey here, what theme, what mood, what tone, what images she's trying to convey. So if we take the first five lines, the first four lines, it used to feel too big and mostly abandoned, leftover land between neighboring cul-de-sacs and the elementary school. It, okay, it's not named, but we can use our inferencing skills to say that it's probably the backyard itself. Okay, again, going back to the title, the backyard then, the backyard in the past. It used to feel too big and mostly abandoned. Leftover land between a neighboring cul-de-sacs and the elementary school. Okay, so cul-de-sacs were sort of roads um, that were dead ends, essentially, people that lived on dead, dead ends. So she's saying that her, uh, her backyard was in between these dead ends on other streets and the elementary school. Still... I would visit its hum, excuse me, still I would visit its few, few humble stations. Okay, still I would visit. Right away we've got a first person uh, point of view account. Okay, so this person would visit in the past the few humble stations, humble there meaning low in rank or condition, meaning modest. Okay, so she's talking about modest parts of the, uh, of her backyard. And now we get some images, the cracked stump by the fence, always crawling with ants. Nothing there except for an image, a cracked stump by the fence, always crawling with ants. Ants all over this stump near the fence. No metaphor, no simile, just an image. The narrow space behind the garage lined with unused slate, just standing there waiting for my parents' hands. So now we've got a, a space, it's behind the garage lined with unused slate, and now we've got some more characters uh, entering into it. She's got parents. We can use our inferencing skills to say, oh, she's, she was young then. Okay, so all this stuff is sitting there waiting for her parents' hands. What does that mean? Does that mean applause? Probably not. Probably, when is her parents going to use all these things that are just lying around? Let's continue with our images. Then there was the shady dirt under the old maple tree where I read, 
cradled or sinking between dying tentacle roots. Okay, now she's got an image of uh, shady dirt, okay, under an old maple tree. But more than just that image, she's got herself there where she read, cradled or sinking between dying tentacle roots. What does this tell us about the reader? We don't get much, but we tell her, we, we are told that she'd like to go under this maple tree and read. What can we infer? Maybe she liked to be solitary. We know that she liked to read, okay? So she would always go under this tree. And this tree, uh, sinking between dying tentacle roots, and we'll get into that in a moment. Was there ever, was there ever any glory there? Okay, now she's asking a question. We talked in class about rhetorical questions. Was there ever any glory there? Was there ever anything good there? Let's see if she answers. I can remember a few humid evenings through the crack of the back door. Twilight hanging like a velvet curtain. The thinning pine trees at least only in silhouettes. Okay. She can remember looking through the crack of the back door. It doesn't sound like she took part in these things. Twilight hanging like a velvet curtain. There's a great simile there. Remember the comparison using like or as. Twilight hanging like a velvet curtain. So the twilight of the almost dark, about six o'clock, let's call it, if you can imagine that in your mind, six or seven o'clock, let's call it eight o'clock on a summer's night, where it's just getting dark and it's hanging. Hanging like what? Like a velvet curtain. It's getting dark. She's comparing it to a curtain falling down. The thinning pine trees, at least only in silhouettes. Let's take a look at what silhouette means there. The dark shape and outline of someone visible against a lighter background. So what I want you to imagine when you think of a silhouette is I want you to imagine that you're looking out into a field and it's pitch dark, but there is a moon and there's one tree in this landscape and you don't see any of the uh any of the details of the tree because it's dark but you see the black outline of the tree that's just a silhouette so we get more uh image here okay we've got twilight hanging like a velvet curtain comparing it to a curtain coming down and we get the uh, pine trees that are only in silhouette meaning she can only see them sort of like just in, uh, uh black against maybe the sky okay now she talks about her parents again my parents would be at the top of the empty hill, sitting at the rusty, wrought iron table in an orb of orange candlelight. You've got to ask yourself now, is she sitting with them? Okay, that's worth asking. She sees them sitting at the empty hill at a table, a rusty table, in an orb, a circle of orange candlelight. I knew they were eating artichoke with butter, scraping off the meat of the leaves with their teeth and just casting the rest away okay so that's this poet's remembrances of the backyard then she puts herself in the backyard uh she reads under the tree whenever she sees her parents it's usually through the crack of the back door so this gives us sort of distance between her and the parents despite this remembrance despite this memory okay her parents would be at the top of the empty hill sitting at this table under the orange candlelight, but she is separate from them. She knew what they were doing though. Okay, so we've got this memory, but it's a separation from the family. So it sounds like we could infer that she likes her solitude despite this memory of her backyard. Let's take a look at just a couple of the guiding questions here. Okay, so um, if you go to line 10, Okay, I'm going to go to line eight and read down to line 10. Then there was the shady dirt under the old maple tree where I read cradled or sinking between dying tentacle roots. Let's see what the question is. Okay, so question one is, which of the following this best describes how the speaker felt about the backyard? They like certain places in the backyard. They avoid getting in the backyard. They spent most of their time in the backyard or they have bad memories of the backyard. Let's take B first. They avoided going in the backyard. Well, no, we know they read under the tree. They spent most of their time in the backyard. She doesn't say anything about spending most of her time. They have bad memories. I think that one's out of the question. So if we look at A, they liked certain places in the backyard. Reading under a tree, that's most likely the right answer, and it is. Okay, let's go to question two. Okay, the speaker's memories of their parents. Okay, remember the end. I'm going to read the 15 to uh, the end again. My parents would be at the top of the empty hill, sitting at the rusty wrought iron table in an orb of orange candlelight. 
I knew they were eating artichoke with hot butter, scraping off the meat of the leaves with their teeth and just casting the rest away. The speaker's memories of their parents are that they didn't enjoy the backyard. Nothing says about that. Nothing um, specific about that. They didn't spend much time in the backyard. No proof of there. Their parents enjoyed themselves in the backyard, possibly, or it proves that the speaker has many negative memories of the backyard. Now, here we have at least three, A, B, and D, or that are out of the question because we do know that they're sitting there under the orange, uh, excuse me, uh, within the orange candlelight, okay? They wouldn't be sitting there if they enjoyed it. So it shows that they enjoyed the backyard. Okay, what I'd like you to do is read this poem a couple of times. Once you're done, you're going to be looking for a theme here. Think about what we just talked about, the images, uh, the metaphors, the inferred attitude of the speaker, and you can ans answer the assessment questions theme and what supporting ideas you get for the theme, okay? Best of luck, guys. Great job. Keep up the good work.